Happy Leap Day 2016. This is Leap Day only leap a leap year is every four years you have a um an extra day in February, which is February 29th. Normally February only has 28 days. Um, I'm going to read you really quick a brief history, and I'll also post this on the blog so that you can read it. The solar or tropical year is approximately 365.2422 days long. No calendar comprised of whole days can match that number, and simply ignoring the seemingly small fraction creates a much bigger problem than one might suspect, which is why most of the modern world has adopted the Gregorian calendar and its leap year system to allow days and months to stay in step with the seasons. Seriously, if you think about it, um, and you ignore a quarter of a day, that eventually we would end up with, you know, the heat of summer in the middle of January, and in the middle of, um, like, August, it's going to be, like, 12 degrees outside, um, which could just get really crazy. And this, our sense of time in the point of the whole world would just get insane. And keeping dates and remembering when they, that would it'd just be, it would really get crazy. Um, and in fact, it did. <clears throat> Efforts to make nature's schedule fit our own have been imperfect from the start. Some ancient calendars dating to the Sumerians 5,000 years ago simply divided the year into 12 months of 30 days each. Their 360-day year was nearly a week shorter than our annual journey around the sun. When the Egyptians adopted this calendar, they were aware that this was a problem. They didn't add any extra days to the regular calendar. They just put on an extra five days of festivals and partying at the end of the year. So it was like party week. It's like, you know, the first week of Pensick. If you're in the Society for Creative Anachronisms, the only way you're going to get that joke. Sorry. Um, by the time Julius Caesar enjoyed his famed affair with Cleopatra, Rome's calendar had diverged from the seasons by some three months. But Egypt was observing a 365-day year, and as early as the 3rd century BC had even established the utility of a leap year system to correct the calendar every four years. Julius adopted the system by decreeing a single 445-day-long year of confusion. Can you imagine a 455-day year? To correct the long years of drift in one go. He then mandated the 365 and a quarter day year that simply added a leap day every fourth year. And we have pretty much continued in this tradition. There's been like a tiny bit of tweaking, but it's basically been that system since Julius Caesar. So honestly, that's pretty sweet. Um, some ideas for implementing leap year into your classroom. Um, there's a really great coloring book. I'm going to give you the link. The link, the link. Um, that I found that, like, if you're a, a homeschool parent or a grandparent, you can download a copy for free. And if you're a teacher, you can pay a dollar twenty-five. Like, seriously, this is not expensive. Dollar twenty-five to use it in your classroom for the year. Um, it's pretty awesome. But it's really cute. Uh, I don't know what I did with my copy. I thought I had it sitting right here, but I don't know. Um, my sister probably stole it to color. Um. The other thing you, that's really common with Leap Day is is taking it as a day to learn about frogs and um, animals that leap, lemurs. Um, so one of the ways that I like to do this for an elementary schooler is you can, there's lots of camp songs like Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts and um, even early L songs about frogs. So I'm going to teach you a couple of them. The first one is a repeat after me song and at first it doesn't sound like it's about frogs at all. Okay. So it goes like this. It goes cat, and then you repeat cat. So I'll just repeat as I, um, I'll just say it twice because it, yeah, it's a repeat after me. So cat, cat, dog, cat, dog, mouse. I guess I'm not repeating. I think I'm going to have to edit this. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Cat, 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 dog, cat, dog, cat, dog, mouse, cat, dog, mouse, froggies, froggies. Little green froggies love to eat spiders. Little green froggies love to eat spiders. Fleas and flies are scrum diddly ishes. Fleas and flies are scrum diddly ishes. Jump, 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 little froggies. Jump, jump, 
Jump little froggies, ribbit, 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 croak. Ribbit, 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 croak. That's the first froggy song that I know. The, another froggy song that I know is Five little speckled frogs sitting on a speckled frog eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are four little frogs. And then you count down the, the little speckled frogs. Um, I'm not going to do the whole song. And then the other frog that I know goes like this goes. Mm, ah, went the little green frog one day. Mm, ah, went the little green frog. Mm, ah, went the little green frog one day. Mm, ah, went the little green frog. Now we all know frogs go la di da di da, la di da di da, la di da di da. We all know frogs go la di da di da. They never go mm, ah, mm. That's that's the three frog songs I could pull out of my head. I'm sure there's a million other froggy songs, but those are the three. The other one that comes to mind is Froggy Went a Courtin'. Froggy Went a Courtin', and he did go, mm hmm, mm hmm. But, like, that song gets weird fast. So, it's up to you if you want to introduce that song to elementary school students or preschoolers. All of this works for preschool. Preschool and elementary school, as far as leap day activities, are almost exactly the same as far as what I what I think of to plan. Um, and the other thing that I'm going to teach you really quick how to do is to make an origami frog. So it's way, way easier if you use origami paper. But I do not have origami paper. So I'm going to use construction paper. And as you can see, I'm starting out with a rectangle, which you do not need. You need a square. So I'm going to do the little foldy thing to make it square. But you make a triangle across your paper. So it looks like this. And we've got this little extra dude that I'm um, going to rip him off by folding. It's a lot easier to do it on a flat surface. So you're just going to have to deal with me doing it and then holding it up for you. So you, you fold it up like this, and then here's a trick with any kind of paper, but it works really well with construction paper. You, uh, uh, which kids actually love to do because people always tell them to take the paper out of their mouth. But I would not really do the origami frog with anyone lower than fourth grade. Um, it gets really frustrating if you can't do it, and even if, I've found that adults have a harder time than kids do, but. I really wouldn't go below fourth grade. Um, so like that, and then fold it the other way, because it's a construction paper. Origami paper, you're probably good on one lick. And then look at it again. And then you can rip it very easily, because it's kind of moist. And it comes without, this way, when you do this, the licking thing with kids, it rips a straighter line. And already we're at step two for our frog making because you have to fold it diagonally again. So you're going to take your folded edge to your folded edge. And so you have like a triangle. And then you unfold it all the way. And you fold it in half horizontally once. I'll post the link for the instructions that I found on the how to make an origami fold from somebody else's blog. So you have this. From this step is where it gets a little bit tricky. And you're going to take this foldy point, point and bring it down to here so the inside. So you have this like um, double layered thing to make a triangle. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. But making an origami frog is very symmetrical in nature. You, If you do one thing to one side, you're going to do it to the other side as well. Which is actually pretty cool. It's a good lesson in symmetry. The origami, I think, is excellent in the classroom for some hands-on math stuff. You do science, too, because you're making a frog. 
and it does a really cool thing at the end so so now you have your like it's kind of a pyramid shape if you um, look at it from this side when you set it down from this side I don't know what you would call that so you have this and the next step you're gonna do is you're gonna take the point of your frog and bring it up or the point of your triangle on the bottom where the open part is and bring it all the way up to the top so that it makes a straight line along the middle and you're going to do that to the second side so that they meet right. my um triangle was not perfect so i have this weird thing so now you have this shape and on the other side it still looks like a triangle and then your next step is to take your point on the end and you're going to fold it in to touch the middle. Like, hi, I'm going to reach in and touch my belly button. You're going to touch my belly button. This side is going to also reach in, touch the belly button right at the same point where the other one is. It makes it easy to do. And then you're going to go like that. Here's where it gets a little bit funky. You're going to take this pointy tip and fold it down like this so you've made two little like two little arm things and then these you're gonna fold them back you're gonna hold your finger here and fold it back up so it made a little like I did it a little bit wrong so you're gonna fold it so that this long edge of your trying little tiny triangle is gonna touch it's short edge there so like this so what we're making is the little front foot of the frog so it looks like that from this side and it, it's like a creasy thing I know it's hard to see I'm gonna fold it up like that Yay, we made our frog now has a head and two little arms he's a tadpole it's like his it's like a um, airplane I can't think of a name of all of a sudden anyway so that you got that point so then the next step we're gonna do is to flip it over and we're gonna work on this side now um, so the first thing we're gonna do is fold these like so the long edge is down so it's sort of like I'm gonna turn into a superhero frog for a minute so you fold like this and then you're gonna fold this one along the same line we're keeping our symmetry I'm gonna do it on the flat surface because it's really hard to do origami in the air oh, my little frog legs me so if you look at it right now it it's very tadpole-y and then it has a little tail in the back and he's got his little arms and there's his head um and then here is where we make his legs i know it doesn't oh wait oh i skipped a step sorry so we do this and then we're gonna take this part this is where we make the legs yep that's right it's sort of where we first step to the legs so you're gonna take this side out and you're gonna match this side to right here this is where if you're using construction paper like me it's hard but with origami paper it's pretty amazing you just have to be careful not to tear it because it's so thin so. you see how I folded it along so that it touched this edge like this and then we're going to do the same thing on this one but, and origami in the air is not not so easy so now we have this and you can sort of see um, if I flip it over how it looks like a frog that's like splayed out for a um, whoops there you go how he's like splayed out for a, like a dissection because here's his belly and his feet and then here's his back legs and then he's not done so the last step is you're gonna um, choose kind of where you want your frog's back to end and where you want his bottom to start so about like a, a quarter or a third of the way down you're gonna fold him 
at a 90 degree angle. Or her. I mean, he could be making a girl frog. I don't know why I assumed he was a boy. And then you're going to fold his legs again at a 90 degree angle going up, like up from this point. So, um... So that, um, so you end up with like a little angle like this, and then you have his legs. And your frog is done. The coolest part about him, and I hope this works because I, I used construction paper so he's heavy, is that your frog can now hop, and you make him hop by pushing down on, yep, on his backside. I don't know if you saw that. You um. You gotta make sure that his legs are under, no, with regular, even with, I've made this with, like, computer paper, it works better, but I wanted to make him green, so I decided to use construction paper. Let me see if I can get this to work again. So, you, you put him down, and you push on his back. I wish I could get him to leap, like, here. That's what I would love to see. Oh, there you hopped off the paper. But he totally can leap. And with kids, what's awesome about that is you have every kid put their name. Or if in my classroom, I plan on doing class numbers. So there's things that will be numbered so that you know. Like, I was always in the middle of the alphabet. And I remember when I was in elementary school, I was often number 19. So I would write a 19 on the back of my frog. And then you could have a race with your class to see whose frog leaps the, lo the farthest and the shortest distance, and do some measurement activities, um, and you can, kids, kids get a kick out of, um, if you put a piece of tape, a piece of, of yarn to it, and hold on to one end, and do it, and see if your, your, your frog goes farther than, and various, all kinds of activities that you can do, um, with your origami frogs that hop, and then your kids have, you know, one more thing to make out of paper, Ad, ad nauseum than just um, paper airplanes and those weird like cups and the balloon things that I was never good at making. So I'm not good at origami and I'm getting pretty good at this frog. So I only messed up on the first time I made it. Um, and I follow these instructions that I found on my hyphen own time dot blogspot.com. So I'll post the linky link down below um, afterwards. There's other, the other things I was thinking um, for implementing leap day into your classroom um, from any grade, preschool through high school, is to do math focused around the number 29 and the 29th day of February. And um, that old joke, uh, if February has 28 days, which month, or if on a leap day, on leap year, February has 29 days. Um, what months have 28? And it's all of them? Yeah. There's all kinds of bad jokes about that. And frog jokes. And I wouldn't go anywhere near the frog and a blender jokes with elementary schoolers. And it's probably inappropriate for high school, too. Um, for secondary ed, uh, the ideas I came up with for integrating leap year activities into your classroom um, are calculating the physics of leap year and why we have to make it what it is and um, what ways things could have gone wrong if we didn't use leap day and um, there's a really great Neil deGrasse Tyson video that's like I want to say it's like five minutes long on on that he gives on leap year and explaining it he goes a little bit into the history and he does some of the physics about it um, that's pretty good and you could also take some writing, I th you can do the science stuff with the physics or with frogs and animals that leap, and you can go that route with, with high schoolers as well. Um, you can read about leap day um, and various things. Most of the information that I've given comes from the National Geographic website, actually, um, and some of it was prior knowledge on my part. I don't even know where I learned it. Um, but you can also write from the perspective of a person during the year of confusion. Um, you can rake up your own holiday about 
from that year or from the um, one of those Egyptian party weekdays um, or describe a, an Egyptian party day and what you think went on in it. Have kids kind of design your own party. We had to do that for The Great Gatsby and I hated it, but to do it for one day on your own kind of or let kids in groups design a party, it's um, I wouldn't make it a huge project. I mean, it is once every four years. Um, there's lots of Pinteresty things everywhere or anything to do with frog crafts. I mean, origami is as close as I get as far as like teacher created cutesy things kind of annoy me. Um, but it's, you can go that route. You could do any Kermit the Frog stuff. You could talk about Jim Henson and Kermit the Frog and how important he's been to our culture. You can get into a social studies aspect. Um, you can, um, there's, yeah, there's the nat math 29 day thing that you, it's pretty unlimited. Your imagination is probably way better than mine. So, um, that's it. Uh, happy February 29th, 2016 and happy, um, I'll see you again in four years when this post pops up. Um, bye.